their house. It's William Webb's house. So where Blue Cross Blue Shield sits was William Webb, also a member of Second Baptist Church, one of the black leaders of the Underground Railroad in Detroit that should be getting through. Now we keep seeing black people with leadership in the Underground Railroad. This was their, this was his house. When Frederick, Frederick Douglass came to Detroit, he stayed at William Lambert's house, which is about a mile down that way. But while he was here, another important abolitionist was in Detroit at the same time. John Brown, a white man from Kansas, who lived in Kansas at the time. Black people had escaped from Missouri and sought him out. And they found him and said, you know, we're trying to get to Canada. Can you help us? And he did. He brought them to Chicago first. And then from Chicago, he came here. And he stayed at William Webb's house with the 13 black people who had escaped from slavery. So he brings them here and they're staying at William Webb's house. William Webb and William Lambert are like, hey, I got Frederick Douglass at my house. You got John Brown. They should meet. And so they have the meeting here. And a bunch of other people show up too. William Monroe, who's the minister at Second Baptist Church, uh, George the Baptiste, Dr. Joseph Ferguson, John Jackson. We, this is William Webb's house. Of course, he was here. William Lambert is here. So these people are all here. And this is where um, John Brown tells his plan of what he's going to do to end slavery. Because John Brown is a white man. He's an abolitionist, but he believes that it's going to, he's going to have to kill other white people to end slavery. And he's already been doing it in Kansas. He's already killed numerous white people who were there to try to bring slavery into Kansas. Uh, so he, um, his plan, of course, is to attack a military warehouse in, in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. Take the weapons from that military warehouse and pass it out to black people who are enslaved. They will go into the hills with the weapons and then protect the area in the hills. So as whites try to come up the hills, they will shoot them one by one. Black people would escape to these hills and be able to have refuge by armed black people. That's his plan. Somebody snitched. When he makes it to the military arsenal in Harper's Ferry, the militia is waiting for him. Capture him, his two sons, the other black people who joined him, and they sentenced them all to death. But the, Frederick Douglass, of course, doesn't believe the, didn't believe the plan was going to work. Right. You know, so he de doesn't join because he didn't he didn't think it was going to be successful. Frederick Douglass did believe bloodshed was going to have to end slavery, but he believed that black the United States government was going to have to be on the side of that bloodshed. They was going to have to be fighting to end slavery. So this is where they met. They would meet again over in Canada in Chatham. But the first meeting happens right here in Detroit. And Asala put this marker here in 1962. They were, at that time, they weren't Association for the Study of African American Life and History. They were Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. But the Detroit branch of Asala put this here in 1962. The modern version of this organization, I'm the vice president of.